All right, guys, we got the concrete truck arriving. We got the concrete crew here. He's going to go around the shed in the house to get to the pole barn because we have some underground buried pipe and we don't want to crush that. So how many, uh, John, how many yards of concrete are we bringing in? Uh, 10 in a callback. 10 in a callback? What does that mean? That means we might... He's got 10 yards and there'll be a callback. Whatever we need after we get through, we'll call for the... We'll measure it out and get the remainder we need. All right, so um, look, get, guesstimating. I'm going to put this camera on you if that's okay. All right. Oh, yeah. This is John King from King Concrete. <laughs> so what, what do you... Maybe it won't break. <laughs> what are you uh, estimating for this job for the pole barn? About 14, 15 yards. 14, 15 yards. So we get 10 yards out of this truck, and then they call back and get the other four or five, that's depending right. on what you see when, when they dump that out. Uh, you got washing, you know, that some of the footers are a little bigger. You can't, the concrete's not accurate science. It's supposed to be accurate, but sometimes it may be 10 yards, it may be nine and oh, a half. Oh, right. You know what I'm saying? So you always allow for that. And uh, so we'll, we'll see. We always... You know, if it's under the 10 yard ratio, then you get a call back. You get close, figure it up, measure it out, and get that coming there so you ain't got a bunch of extra concrete or right. not enough, you know. Right. So. All right, guys, I'm gonna talk loud. We got a loud concrete truck here. Uh, John's putting in my electrical conduit that's going to bring power into this workshop. So they gotta dig that out a little bit manually. We're gonna, we just talked about it off camera, but we're gonna do two by six walls on the exterior and the interior because we want it to support a loft. And that loft will probably have heavy bales of hay and things like that on it. All right, so that's the view. Got the concrete truck backing up. Like I opened with the video, uh, it's, it's a lot drier now than it was. And so he's able to uh, come around the house and the shed there originally is gonna come around through this pasture behind me because right in this area and in this area, we have a four inch pipe underground and we didn't want that concrete truck to crush it. It's uh, 18 inches to two feet underground and in some places it's up to three feet underground, but I don't wanna take that chance. Um, it's a lot of work to put in, you know, that underground drainage pipe that collects my gutters and uh, it's just safer and it's just better to take a different route. So that's what they did and I sure appreciate that. We're gonna capture this as it flows. Uh, we didn't do footers on my parents' house, so we're gonna watch them do footers. I've never seen footers poured before. Um, the rebar's in there already, the uh, vapor barrier's in on the slab, and uh, the wire mesh is in there already. So we're, we're pouring and we're finishing today. All right, we got the first concrete flowing. We got John King up here directing traffic. You see the uh, SRM operators inside the truck, and he can control that boom from inside the truck. He pours it out, and then they pull it to where they need it. I'm inside the truck with the uh, SRM truck driver. He's got his little joystick over there like an excavator. And he's moving back and forth. He's moving the boom. What do you call that? Uh, the chute, right? All right, so I'm just talking to the truck driver and it's, uh, it's about 10 o'clock here at the farm and he came from Mariana, Florida, which is uh, where the closest concrete place to the farm. So that, I don't know, probably 45 minute drive or so down the interstate. But he said he's been working at 2 a.m. this morning. He said they poured a Dollar General store, 200, I think he said 230 yards of concrete. So uh, yeah, it's 10 o'clock, he's already got eight hours in. 
and uh, he's going to go back for the callback and bring the additional four or five yards that we need for this pour. So hardworking men, it's a, it's a hard industry to be in, and uh, right now there's a building boom, and they just cannot keep up. Uh, the last I heard, you've got to order concrete two weeks in advance. And if you think about the weather, all the rain we've had in Florida, that's just a real hard um, industry to be in because you can't predict the weather and you can't pour uh, when it's raining. And I don't know if we caught it earlier, but John said this is a dry slump or a drier concrete. It's got less water in it because we had a cool front come through and we don't have the heat of the day to help us cure the concrete. So they don't want to be here 12 hours on this little pour. So they have a drier mix. They have less time to work it. And uh, yeah, they got to they got to be hustling. And the sun is not going to be on this concrete when it, you know, as the sun moves and it goes over the top of this pole barn, they'll they'll get more shading. So they want it as dry as possible so they can get this job done, um, you know, with as few hours as necessary to get it done. This job take you the rest of the day because of the drying to finish it? Yeah, sure. Just because the curing and time of the concrete will make us be here. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you heard that, but with this sun, behind me is the south. So he's going to have sun on this, at least this portion of the slab. Uh, probably more sun than he thought and it's, it's probably 70 degrees right now it'll be it'll get up to 80 today but he uh, he doesn't have a lot of time to work this so I'm gonna kind of stand back take video from afar and uh, minimize how much minimize how many questions I ask all right folks we got concrete truck number two coming in it's about 50 minutes later since the uh, last concrete truck came but this will be the concrete for the footer John's bringing him around. It looked like he was about to go around the pasture. So Lily came by, our neighbor's dog, and she decided to walk across the concrete. So we had Lily tracks on the concrete, but they've smoothed that out. So I've got Lily over here on a rope because uh, we don't want any more concrete tracks. I'll let her go. I mean, the concrete will dry fairly quickly and I'll let her go, but for now, Lily, you're gonna have to have a rope. All right, he's getting in the position so we can pour the rest of this 12 by 12 and then start doing the footers. Just tell me when to lift it. All right, we got to pick up the power trowel with the tractor and put it on the concrete.
All right, so that was a little shaky because I was trying to drive the tractor and not mess anything up. Poor Lily wants to come join us, but we can't let her right now. Anyhow, this is the power trowel. Getting ready to smooth her off. We're gonna go with a smooth finish. Okay, so we got the 12 by 12 feed room filled with the second load concrete truck. We got the footers poured. Put J bolts in them for this wall. Okay, so they're trying to pour this last section of footer that's over my left shoulder. And uh, because of the way we got the drainage pipes under the ground there, we don't want to run over them with the concrete truck. So they're going to put some more extensions on the chute, and then we're going to use this very fancy piece of equipment right there to do the last 24 feet. But we're getting there. All right, wrapping this up. Got the last four going on behind me. Got the eight by eight pump house going in. We got the water lines around the edges. I'm trying to predict every place I might want to send water. So we'll definitely send water to my folks house right there uh, behind me and then send water to the shed. And then we're going to send water over to our house eventually, which will be in that open area. All right, I don't want to get much closer because Bella, the neighbor's dog will follow me and I don't want her to jump on that concrete. There is Bella. Bella, come here. Come here. But that's what we got done. We got that poured. We got a footing all the way around, and they started knocking off the 2x12s that make up the forms. Then I went around the whole thing and picked up all the extra pieces of concrete. Well, I did that with a shovel and the tractor bucket. But uh, you'll see the concrete for the pole barn is done. Uh, you can see it is starting to take shape. The dirt area will be stalls for animals, and the concrete area will be a workshop and a feed room and the feed rooms for the animals. All right, let's go over to the pump house. Bella, stay off the concrete. Bella, no. Got that look in your eye. All right, here we go. We got an eight by eight slab with footers with water pipes. I got four one inch water pipes going out and I put a four inch pipe there that we can run PEX line through if uh, I need additional water lines to come out of the pump house. But there's the electrical, that umbilical there, and then you see the well itself in the background. The door was supposed to go on this corner, uh, closest to the camera, but it doesn't look like I have enough room for the door to swing in. So maybe the door will go on the back side, which means the J bolts are in the wrong place, and that is not the contractor's fault. That is my fault for not realizing that that wire would be in the way in all of these uh, conduits or this um, PVC pipe. So. 
kind of painting myself in a corner here, but I'll figure it out. So you're on the trailer. So you think the trailer is a good place for a Bella? Really? Is that a good place for a Bella? You look very regal up there, Bella. 